Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my spooky book recommendations part 4. I do this annually on my channel, usually in October or November. Like I said, this is part four, so there are three other recommendation videos that you guys can check out if you want more spooky books. I'll leave them linked below. Obviously, if I talked about them in that video, I'm not going to talk about them here. I chose a total of five to talk about today, so without further ado, let us get started. So the first one should come to no surprise for a lot of people because I've been recently raving about this book, but it is The Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foody, and this book is so underrated in my opinion. It's about a girl named Serena who is the Princess of Gamora, which is a traveling circus that she is an act in during the freak show. Her act consists of a variety of performances that involve her family who are actually illusions that she has created with her mind. She loves her family, but ultimately she knows that they are not real. So when one of them is murdered one night, she is shocked and confused. She enlists the help of another performer named Luca who is going to help her solve the mystery of how and who killed her illusion before they strike again. I actually chose this book based off of the setting. It's set in a dark, creepy, atmospheric, traveling circus, and if that doesn't sound like it should be in a spooky recommendation video, I don't really know what does. Everyone in the circus has something called jinx work, which is basically like a talent or a skill, like a supernatural power that they possess, and it just makes for a really spooky atmosphere, and I'm just here for this book. I think it's super underrated, but I definitely recommend you guys check it out if you're interested in something with a spooky setting but isn't like gonna scare the shit out of you. The next book that I have for this recommendation video is The Innocent Wife by Amy Lloyd and this follows Dennis who is on death row for the abduction and murder of a young girl. He's now the star of a documentary series to tell his story about what happened 22 years ago. The documentary ends up getting a lot of attention especially from a woman named Samantha who lives in Great Britain. They begin writing letters to each other, they end up falling in love and eventually getting married. As his story gains more support from the public, Dennis is actually exonerated of his crimes that he was accused of and is sent free from jail. As they start their new lives together, Sam starts to uncover some secrets and new things that she didn't know about Dennis and she starts to question how well she really knows her husband. I chose this book solely because of Dennis. He was so creepy. I never knew what side of him was going to show up. He had a very sweet side, but then he had a very like angry, aggressive side, and you never knew which one was going to pop out at what time. I'm personally just a huge fan of like not knowing what is going on in a story. I hate being able to like predict and call things, and I never knew whether or not Dennis was guilty or not, and that was like a huge part of the thrill for me with this book. I definitely think that this is more of a like tame spooky book like it's not gonna freak you out unless like you decide to go marry a convicted felon so i mean you do you if that's what you feel like but like personally would not do that the next book that i have is called what we buried by kate a berman i actually have a full review of this if you guys are interested in checking that out honestly you could choose this book solely based off of the cover like look at that it is so creepy but like once you read the story it works so well with it this is about two siblings one is named Liv, one is named jory they are complete opposites the only thing they really have in common is the resentment that they feel towards their parents. Liv was a child beauty pageant queen and was paraded around the circuit by her mother. Jory has always felt like he is in the shadow of Princess Liv because he has a partial facial paralysis. When Liv announces that, that she is suing their parents, Jory believes that this is all another stunt for attention, so when their parents go missing on the day of the trial, they must work together in order to find them. And it's like the story of that. For the majority of this book, you have no idea what is going on. It is a complete trip and it's just such a mindfuck to be honest. Both of the characters are very unreliable and that adds to the spookiness. I also think that this book should be gone into blind without a lot of knowledge about what the plot entails. I think that it makes it a lot better in my opinion, but I definitely recommend this if you want to be mindfucked. The next book that I have is called The Telling by Alexander Sereau and this follows a girl named Lana who has 
grown up listening to stories from her stepbrother named Ben. These stories fueled her summer of make-believe and adventure, always leaving Lana and Ben as the heroes who defeated the villains. Then Ben is killed and Lana is swallowed up by her grief, becoming a shadow of herself. While trying to pick up the crumbling pieces of her life, Lana and her friends go swimming one day in the river and they end up finding a body. The body ends up being that of Maggie, Ben's ex-girlfriend, and that causes Lana to become a number one suspect when the police make the connection. Then the bodies begin piling up and Lana quickly realizes that there are strange connections to each of the brutal murders and the stories that Ben used to tell. This is another one where the narrator Lana is very unreliable, which personally I just always think make books more spooky just because you have no idea what's true and what's not. This author is actually the author of one of my most disliked books. It's called The Creeping, so it just kind of goes to show that you need to give authors second chances because I would never have picked up this book if I had realized that it was the same author, but this one was like 20 times better than The Creeping. I definitely recommend if you want like a spooky book where you have no idea what the fuck is going on. And then the final book that I have, again, should be no surprise because I rave about this book all the time, it is Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand, and this is another one where you need to give authors second chances because I read Fury Born by her, absolutely hated it, didn't realize that she wrote this book, read it, loved it. So give authors a second chance. But this follows an island called Sawkill Island where girls have been going missing for years now. The rumor of the island states that there is a monster called the Collector who hunts down and kills and eats these girls because bodies are never left. The legend also states that there are three girls that are able to fight and defeat the monster if they work together before it's too late and it's kind of like the story of those three girls coming together. This one is spooky because of the legend of the creeper and how he is portrayed in the book. I don't want to give it away because like that's a spoiler but it is so well done and spooky and creepy and I'm just totally here for it. The book is definitely bloody and gory but it's not too much to handle. Personally I have a very weak stomach when it comes to that stuff but I was able to keep reading. I listened to it on audiobook so maybe that's why. I'm not sure. I also really like that you got a multiple point of view in this book. You got the girls and then you also got the island which I thought was a really kind of weird but also really cool aspect of the book. This is another one that I have a full review of if you want to check it out, so I'll leave that down below if you're interested, but definitely, definitely recommend this, especially around Halloween time. It's like the perfect spooky read. Okay, everybody, that was my spooky book recommendations part four. Let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Yeah.